So special announcement here, uh, I'm taking in year 10 and year 11 students to prepare for their maths and at maths examination. So for further details, feel free to go down to the description box, fill up the Google form and I will get back to you as soon as possible. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Let's continue with our paper today. So today we will be solving our May June 2021 paper 41. Okay, it is actually a long overdue paper that I don't have time to record it. Okay, so this is the paper review for it. I hope you find it helpful. So let's go to the first question here. Okay, a total cost of a taxi journey is calculated as 0 0.5 per kilometers plus 0 0.4 per minute. So it takes a total of 32 kilometers and 30 minutes. So to get to the answers, basically you have to calculate on both sides, 2 times 0 0.5 and also add up the cost with 30 minutes with 40 cents. So 32 times 0 0.5 plus 30 times 0 0.4, you get the results as 28. For the next question here, the total cost of the journey of 100 kilometers is $98. Show that the time taken is two hours. So they told us the kilometers specifically. So I take 0 0.5 times 100 adding up with the hours that we are unsure about or they are asking us to prove so i set it as a unknown here and the total price was given as 98 so 98 minus with 100 times 0 0.5 that would get you 48 and this results okay here divided by 0 0.4 you will get it as 120 minutes and this 120 minutes here will translate into two hours all right so part b here three taxi drivers travel a total of 8190 kilometers in the ratio of so they were asking for the specific driver distance travel so first thing to do is to find the total ratio first that will be by taking 5 plus 2 plus 7, you will get it as 14. So to find the respective driver's distance, just take 8,190 times 5 over 14, followed by 8,190 times 2 over 14, and lastly, 8,190 times 7 over 14. Okay. So the respective results will be as below. So we got 2,925 followed by 1,170. And lastly, we have 4,095. So these are the three drivers respective distance traveled. Moving on to section C, so far so good, everything seems easy. After midnight, the cost of any taxi journeys increased by 45%. One journey cost 84.10 after midnight. Calculate the same journey before midnight. So kindly take note, increased by 45% means that from the original, it increased by 45. So what we are dealing here is actually 145%. So the original after increased by 145%, it will result in 84 and 10. So by taking 84 and 10, divide it with 145%, then you will get the results as 58. 
Moving on to section two. Okay, we have our speed time graph here. Find the acceleration in meters per second square or the train during the first 50 seconds. So during the first 50 seconds, basically what you're doing is calculate the gradient here. We have 50 and nine. So the acceleration is basically by taking y2 minus y1 o x2 minus x1. So nine over 50, you get the results as 0 0.18 basically. After 180 seconds, the train decelerate at a constant rate of 1,944 kilometers per hour square. Show the train decelerate for 60 seconds after until it stopped entirely. Okay, so my task here was to convert this kilometers into meters. And the hours here, I have to convert it into seconds. So inside one hour, there's 60 minutes and each minute is there's 60 seconds. The key assessment here was that whether you left out on the square. So if you pay attention to the details, you would have squared this denominator here then you should be able to get your results as 0 0.15. Show that it deaccelerate 60 seconds until it stops. So all you have to do is to trace the distance here. So nine divided by 0 0.15. So at this section, some students might wonder why I took 9 divided by 0 0.15. So if you look closely and fill up the respective details, you will get our deacceleration here as 0 0.15 meters per second square, while our speed was 9 meter per second. So in order to get to the time, which is just S symbols only, we were supposed to take our meter per second divided with meters per second squared. Because through this arrangement, we will be able to cancel off our meters. We'll be able to cancel our time and you have our final seconds here. So 9 divided by 0 0.15, you'll get your final result as 60 seconds. That's how they prove this possible. Okay. So to complete the speed time graph, basically you have to calculate from here after 60 seconds, what time would it arrive at? Okay. We know that this is actually 180 at the moment. If you were to add 60 seconds into it, it will arrive at 240, which means by joining the lines here together, you will get to your final results. Okay, so this will be how the graph looks like when it was being completed. Next step. They were asking for average speed of the train for the whole journey. So the average speed here means that we have to find the total distance and divide by the total time taken here. So clearly it's a trapezium shape. Okay. So I illustrate one small one for the convenience of everyone. To get to the top part, it is by taking 180 minus 50. And to get to the dinner, uh, the bottom, it's actually 240 here. So 240 plus 180 minus 50, you will have 130 here. Top plus bottom divided by two and multiply it with the height. You will get your total distance. Okay. You get it as 1,665 meters. Okay. 
and then take this result 1665 divide it with our total time which is 240 seconds you will get your final answer as 6.9375 as the average speed here okay that's pretty much it for our section d here okay let's go on to our question 3a so they gave us two shapes um some of the information is given here so the only key points that i noticed was this they mentioned that total total surface area of the cone is equal to the total surface area of a hemisphere so key things to take note to find the total surface of a cone there's two sections to it the first one is the one at the top and there is a circle at the bottom as well as circle of the hemisphere here and the curved surface okay so there's nothing for us to adjust for the formula even here so just take the pi times our 2.4 and times our slant height of 6.3 and then we have to add it up with the bottom circle that would make it a pi r square which is pi 2.4 square here and it is equals to the hemisphere total surface area so the keyword here hemisphere means that we need to make some adjustments to the spheres formula that they gave so there's a 1 over 2 times 4 times pi times r square alongside you have to add another pi r square here okay and then we can proceed with our calculation so just key in pi times 2.4 times 6.3 okay you get 378 over 25 pi adding up with 2.4 which is 14425 pi equals to 2 pi r square plus pi r square it results in 3 pi r square so this at the back i have to add it up with 378 25 that will make it 522 over 25 pi r you have to get rid of the 3 pi and remember to square root the result so you will get your r as 174 over 5 which results in 2.64 after correcting it to three significant figures so the only tricky part would be whether you notice the hemisphere there or not okay so that's how you secure the four marks pretty straightforward the next part here the diagram shows a solid cone with radius of 7.6 centimeters and a height of 16 centimeters a cut is made parallel to the base of the cone and the top section of the cone is removed the remaining solid has a height of 12 shows in the diagram calculate the volume of the remaining solids okay so key things to take note was that part of it was removed and the part which is the cone at the top it's actually a height of four centimeters this i got on it by tracing mm, the difference between 16 and 12. so the radius for this is remains as unknown so we have to figure out what's the radius first so that we can accurately calculate what was taken out from this equation so the 7.6 against the 16 now we shorten it to 4 against the r so through your cross multiplication you get 7.6 times 4 divided by 16 and you get your results as 1.9 as the radius of the cone being removed 
So to get to the volume, we have to take one third times pi times 7.6 square times the height of 16. So this is to calculate the original shape. Then here comes the difference, which is by taking one over three times pi times our R here as 1.9 and our height of four centimeters. Okay, so let's run it out. So you get your final results as 7581 over 25 pi and then make it into decimals. Here we'll get it as 952.656. Three significant figures will result in 953 centimeters cube. Okay, so that's how I solve this section B. Moving on, we have question four. The exchange rate of one euro is 1.142. So Johan changed 500 euros, okay? $500 into euro, sorry. So we have to take our 500 and divide it with 1.142. Let's see what we get. So by taking 500 divided with 1.142, you get your results as 437.82837127846. And they wanted you to convert it into the nearest euro. So it means that our answer would be 438 euros. Section two, Johan buys a computer for 329. The same computer costs 275. So the only things that we have to convert here would be this 275 euros because they wanted us to find the cost in dollars. So from euros back into dollars, we have to multiply it with 1.142. You will get your results as 314.05. So the difference here will be by taking 329 minus 314.05 here, 329 minus 314.05. So you get your answers as 14.95. Moving on to section B, Lucy spent three over eight of the money she has saved this month on a book that costs $5.25. How much did she save? So this $5.25 is actually uh, 3 8 of his spending. Okay. So total of the money she saved will be the keyword here. So by taking 5.25 divided with 3 over 8, you will get the money she saved here as $14. Moving on to section C invested 6130 okay so value of the five years so keyword here will be compound interest so through the formula we know that the capital okay this hundred percent here is the part of the formula by r percent to the power of five years then you will get the results as six 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 nine so six 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 nine divided with six one three zero you will get it as six 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 nine over six one three zero. The reason why I didn't write it in decimals is because if I were to roll it in decimals, I would have incurred premature roundings. Okay, and then I proceed to get rid of the power of five by introducing this. So from here, your 100% is actually 1%. So by taking 1.016997882288 minus by 1 and multiply it by 100 at the end of the day. Okay, to get rid of, of the percentage. Minus by 1. Multiply by 100. So you get 
1.82766, which is approximately 1.70. So 1.7% will be the rate that is involved here. Okay, so uh, nothing special. We didn't incur logarithm here because the question settings doesn't require it. So that's pretty much it here. Moving on to question five, they were asking us to calculate the value of AC and to get to that, okay, first thing that I noticed was that there's a straight line here, which means 180 minus 78, you will be able to get 102 as the value of AXC. So to find AC's results, you have to take AC equals to square root of 10.6 square plus 6.4 square minus 2 times 10.6, 6.4 and then a cosine 102. Make sure everything is in degree format, then you get your final answer as 13.4732866 blah 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 and then convert it into three significant figures. That would be 13.5. Moving on, they were asking for BX value now. Hmm. So again, I noticed that it's a triangle, which means that we can immediately trace the results by taking 180, which is a total interior angle of a triangle, minus 78, minus 58 so we get 44 here so through our sine rule i can write sine 44 over bx because it's the opposite of it and also sine 58 with its opposite which is 10.6 so bx value would be by taking 10.6 times sine 44 Divide it with sine 58. So you get your final answer as 8.68273717705, which is approximately 8.68 as your final answer. So we have one last part here, which is to calculate the area of the triangle ABC. So I got no space at the bottom. I will be writing the formula at the top here. So we'll be using the shortcut formula, half a b sine c throughout this question to simplify the calculation here. So half times 10.6 times our bx, which is 8.68 times sine 78. The reason behind is that in this triangle we are using here, here and here okay alongside you have to add the other triangle which is half times 10.6 again and our 6.4 and lastly our sine 102 so this is for the other triangle that is here by adding these two up you should be able to get your final answer so let's do it together. So the final answer for this would turn out to be 78 point. After correcting it to three significant figures. Okay. So that's how you secure the four marks at section C. Moving on to question 6A. Okay. They asked us to shade the vein diagram. Everything other than P union with Q. So this would be my answers here. Okay, hold on. Okay, this is all the parts that have shaded. So some of you might wonder why. Let me show you. Everything other than P is implying they wanted everything outside here. But then they use the symbol of union which means they wanted the entire Q as well. So all the parts with red and blue, a red and black lines here will all be 
the part of the answer. That's how you secure the one marks here. Moving on to section B, pretty straightforward. There are 50 students in a group. 34 have a mobile phone, 39 have a computer, 5 don't have mobile and computer. So the 5 will be clearly right outside of here. And there will be an overlapping here where we have 34 minus x and 39 minus x here that we have to calculate. So to get to the results, you have to write 34 minus x plus x plus 39 minus x plus 5. They will all with a total of 50 students. So I just calculate the numbers first. 34 plus 39 plus 5, you will get 78. And we got a negative x as the balance here. 50 minus 78, you get your results as negative x equals to negative 28. So x would be 28. After knowing these results, all we have to do is take 34 minus 28, you get it as 6. And the other side, you get it as 11. Okay, so that's how you find out the final answer here. Moving on to question C, write down the numbers of students who have brothers. Those who have brothers will include 2, 2, 1, 3. So you're going to total them up. So you get it as 8. Write down the number of students who have cousin but doesn't have sister. So those who has cousin is implying this part but they don't want those that have sister. So only remaining part will be by taking 8 plus 3 which is 11. Next, numbers of B union with S, union with C and everything other than it. So there's no need to do any calculation because what they were implying is just this 2 here. Okay, I notice it immediately because they use the term everything other than it. So other than the three circles, we only have two that is outside of this entire thing. Using side note, set notation, describe a set of students who both have cousin and sister, but do not have brother. Okay, so we now at part four here, we have cousin and sister but don't have any brothers, so everything other than brothers here. This would be the set notation that I'll be writing down. One student is picked at random from the 30 students here. Find the probability that the student has a cousin. One of the students is picked at random from the 30 students. Okay, so those who have cousin is actually by taking all this and add them up. So we have a total of 19 there. And then just the 30, okay, out of 30 students. So the next part is where it gets fun because now they say two students are chosen at random from those who have cousins. So we have 19 of them followed by 18. Notice the denominator decrease, right? It is because if it's involving human being, after one was being taken out, they will decrease in denominator so out of here they wanted to have brothers as well so at first there was four of them which has brothers then after one was being taken out it becomes three so four over 19 times three over 18 so we get your answer as two over 57 all right so section seven one student is picked at random from the 30 students. Event A, this student has a sister. Event B, this student has a cousin but don't have a brother. The probability of having a sister is 
by taking 2 plus 1 plus 7 plus 5 that will make it 15 over 30 the students who have cousin but don't have brothers cousin but no brothers cousin but no brothers is implying this part so 8 plus 7 over 30 is also 15 over 30 so you can say that both events probability is 15 over 30 or you can write it as half basically okay so that's how you sort out this question here moving on we have question seven okay we are now officially halfway through the paper now so the key assessment here was to convert the 25 into 5 square and then for the denominator you're required to factorize it so i'm gonna factorize it by having our a as 1 b as negative 1 and c as negative 20. so for those who is wondering behind in front of x squared there's 1 behind a in front of x there's negative 1 and the numbers integer here is negative 20. so we get two brackets here one goes by x plus 4 and the other one is x minus 5. So for the numerator, you can now introduce the formula in a plus b, a minus b. Okay, and you would have noticed that our x minus 5 is repeating. So your final answer here would be x plus 5 and x plus 4. Okay. Moving on to section B, you have to make the denominator the same. That will be this. And we have x plus 5 multiplied with x minus 1. x plus 8 multiplied with x. So through the expansion, you will get x squared minus 5x. minus x plus 5x minus 5 adding up with x squared plus 8x and we have x x minus 1 so for the top you will have this at the end 12 and then 5 Please double check and see whether it can be factorized or not. So if there's decimals there means it cannot be factorized and this will be my final answer here. Moving on to section C, this is from the new part of the syllabus. Now they mention you are required to run your differentiation now. So we got our dy dx results as 6x squared minus 8x as our results. Reason behind is that I brought out the power and then the power will be decreased by 1. So through this multiplication, you get these results here. So to find the gradient, okay, all you have to do is to substitute the 4 into your dy dx because dy dx is called a gradient function so 6 times 16 okay because our 4 squared 16 minus 8 times 4 so you get your final answer as 64 here moving on they were asking for stationary point to get to stationary point you must remember that will be our dy dx being zero so 6x squared minus 8x equals to zero i took out the 2x and i have a balance of 3x minus 4 here so x would turn out to be zero and our 3x minus 4 will be zero as well so x final value will be 4 over 3 and 
zero. So to find the respective y, when your x is zero, your y will be automatically six, basically. But I'm still writing it down to show you what's happening. Okay, and the other one, when x is four over three, this one you're required to calculate it properly. Four over three being cubed minus four, four over three being squared plus six. So that you will get your answers as 98 over 27. Okay, notice I didn't write it in decimals. It is because if I were to write it in decimals, it wouldn't be accurate. Then it wouldn't be the qualified as the turning point. Okay. Moving on to question eight here. Okay, they want us to find the cumulative frequency. So the first one will be three remain unchanged, but the next one will be 19 plus three. So what cumulative frequency means is that it's stacked up together. So the next one will be 43 followed by a five. And finally, it will be 50. So we are required to illustrate it out. So let me plot out the points. Okay, so let's start draw the graph. So the first one is three, followed by when it's 25, it's 22. 25 is somewhere around here. 22 is here. Okay, going on, 35 is 43. Then 40 is 48. And lastly, it arrived at 50. So I'm gonna adjust and then try to draw it out. Zero, zero is here. Okay, so this is how am I going to submit my answers here. Okay. Mm, if I were to nitpick, I might get the duck marks from here. Okay, but what I draw here is just for illustration purposes. Okay, next question. They ask for numbers of children with a mass of 32 or less. 32 or less is somewhere around here. 32 kg, so when we trace it back, it approximately 38, I suppose. 38 are the one that is lesser. So they wanted us to get this part downwards. Moving on to section B, they want us to find and construct the Oh, box and whisker diagram all right so they are very good they gave us the range already so we were given 1.5 a 1.45 as the result of the lowest point and then they want 1.83 With that out of the way, the next thing that I'm going to do is to check how much is our cumulative frequency when it is 50. So by tracing this, we'll get our median actually. Our median was given as 1.64. Yeah, 1.64. So 1.64 is somewhere around here. And then we have our 25%. So 100 is total, 25% is somewhere around here. So when you trace it down, it's 1.57. And then one last part, 75 is somewhere around here. Trace it down, it would be 1.71. That should be it. 
So that's how I trace the respective results. Now we are at question nine here, asking us to calculate the prism surface area. So there's only one information that is missing, which is the base here. We have to calculate it by taking our BC equals to 20 square minus 13 square. 20 square minus 13 square. You will get your results as 2, 3, 1 for that particular part. Okay. Having that as 2, 3, 1, we can now proceed with our calculation. That is 13 times 2, 3, 1 times half. And there's twice of them because there's here and there's another one here. Adding up with 13 times 24. This is the one at the back. Then the bottom here would be 2, 3, 1 times 24 and lastly we have 20 times 24 by adding all this up you should be able to get the results so your final answer here would be 1354.351313 and if we were to round it to three significant figures, it will be 1350. Okay. As for volume, it's a uh, link with the previous part. All you have to do is to calculate the area of the triangle first, and then multiply it by the width dotted, which is another 24 here. So 0 0.4, a 0 0.5 times 13 times 24 times 231. You should be able to get your results as 2370.9947279502 Three significant figures 2370 will do But if you were to write it as 2371 It should be acceptable as well So section C Quite troublesome Because they want us to calculate angle AF Make with the base so for AF here, we know that a few things that we can draw connection to. We have A, we have B connecting to F point. So it was given as 13. So I personally would either go and find our Pythagoras theorem of our BF or you can just find AF here. So I would do AF. Okay, then I would get it as 20 square plus 24 square. Okay, true that. This will be the opposite. This would be the hypotenuse. So we can use our sign here. Equals to 13 over this. Okay, I know would be sine inverse of the entire thing that we have. So that would be 24.6 degree. Moving on, we have our typical graphing quadratic question. Okay, I thought it, was, it wasn't coming out already. But it is here. So gonna repeat the boring steps, which is by substituting the x value that was given to us into the equation. Okay, so this is how the points that they want us to identify looks like. So time to draw out the curve.
So that's it for our craft here. Write down the integers where value of k has no solution. So as you can see, the graph is going downwards on both sides, which means if your y value gets lower and lower, there will still be results there, but it reaches its peak at seven. So at if the y value is seven and above, okay, then there will be no results anymore. So the k value that I would put here will be eight or nine or 10 or any other value that you wanted to. Because over there, when I draw a line, it wouldn't touch the graph at all. Okay, that's what they meant by no solution. Next thing. Okay, so we are required to readjust this formula here. Okay, by comparing the original one and the new one that was given to us. You notice that x squared has been completed. There's no need to change anything or whatsoever. But for 3 to become negative 1 means that both sides I have to add it by 4. So negative 1 plus 4 plus 9 over 2x plus minus x squared equals to 4 first. So through this adjustment, this is what I have. And then the next thing was to convert our 4x and okay achieve that that i have to make some adjustment to our 9 over 2 there 9 over 2 is actually how much 4.5 which means i must shift off the excess by splitting it into this and bring this excess to the other end okay so the new equation would be 4 minus 0.5 x so y equals to 4 minus 0.5x. Let's try to draw it out. When your x is 0, your y would be 4. Okay, and when your x is 2, your y would be 3. So with two of the points, we should be able to draw out already. So first one is here and the next one is here. Two answers that I've gotten is between 0 0.25 and 4.25. So that will be two of my final answers here. Okay, so that's how I get D sorted out. Moving on, we are at question 11 now. They say a size of an exterior angle. Okay. So for this, we have to find the interior angle first. Okay, let's say this is the polygon that they were referring to. 18 minus 2 times 180 divided with 18. You will get it as 160. So because exterior angle is outside of here, the excess part will be 20 only because it will form a straight line. So that would be 20. 180 minus 160, you get 20 as the balance. Next thing here, okay, they want us to calculate BE's length. So first of all, you need to know we are comparing ADC. Okay, this part and this against AEB, which is 5.2. Okay, so let's trace the results. Okay, 5.2 times 6.75 divided with 7.8. Our unknown here will be 4.5, which is our BE's value, 4.5. Moving on, two solids are mathematically similar. The smaller one has a height of two and a volume. So the keyword here is volume. When you solve volume, means that you need to use your cube root. Okay, and larger, larger one, we have 780, cube root again. And the height is our unknown here. 
So the method that I used here was the comparison method. So if you don't understand how it works, okay, uh, there's basically two ways to solve this. There's a comparison and skill factor methods. Okay, uh, you're gonna learn both. You have no choice on this and you have to choose the appropriate one to solve. So for those who have no idea about this topic at all, I actually made a video. I put a link up here so that you can visit the topic and master it before your actual finals. So through our calculation, you get our results as 5.78879, eight, sorry. Which is approximately 5.8 lah after making it into three significant figures. So the next thing here, they were asking P, Q are parallels, okay, R, S and uh, to R, S, P and S is straight line and is a midpoint of R, Q, okay, why they are congruent. So first of all, first thing that I can notice is that our P, Q, R are the same as Q, angle Q, R, S. This is because of alternate angle okay then the next thing that i can comment about is that our angle p and q is the same as r and s the reason behind it was that they are vertically opposite and also one last thing our q p n and our QP and QPN and then our NSR is also alternate. So the next thing that I noticed was that our PN is equals to NS. So because this is the mid point. So ASA here, angle sides angle. So it qualify as a congruent. Next, we are at question 12. This is a function question. Okay, this negative five here that they gave is to be substitute into everything that is written as X here. So through our calculation, we get three plus 10, that would be 13. Okay. So part B, we have F, Fx. So what it means is that you are required to sub in the entire Fx first. And then this entire thing will be put into the X position again. So through this calculation, you will get 3 minus 6 plus 4X. And your final answer would be 4X minus 3. We have our gx written as x squared plus 5 and then 3 minus 2x plus 37. So through the readjustment, we have 5 minus 3 minus 37, you get your results as negative 35. So 1, 2, negative 35, you get your results as x plus 7. x minus 5 so the respective results x equals to 5 x equals to negative 7 okay that's how you find your answers here moving on part d they were asking for inverse so i have to copy what our equation is fx is 3 minus 2x follow the steps of the conversion change it into y first Swap it out and then rearrange as the new subjects. Okay. It will be 3 minus x over 2 as your inverse here. Moving on to our last question. First one they were trying to tell us it was this. Our gx was how much? Our gx was 
x square plus five. Okay, and then our hx happens to be cubed, which means our three minus two x here was being cubed. Okay, so what cube basically meant was that you have to write the same thing thrice. And then you have to multiply them up manually on your own. So you get nine for doing this. This, this, this. I was combine two of them up together first. So the next thing that I did was to nine minus twelve x plus four x squared. Then multiply nine and three. That should be it. So let's calculate negative 8x cubed and then we have 25x squared negative 80 negative 36 and then hold on uh, I think I did some miscalculation here 24 plus 12 plus 1 that will make it 37 instead okay followed by negative 18 negative 36 okay that's all so we have negative 54x and lastly 27 plus 5 that will make it 32 okay so I'll, as for usual i'm gonna double check by using our cubic to see whether it can be factorized or not okay if there's decimals results means that we don't have to run the factorization so that's pretty much it for this particular paper okay uh personally i find this last part a bit troublesome okay other than this the other part that students might struggle would be would be this set and Venn diagram question here okay it's been a while since they really test you out on this chapter okay other than that hmm. The paper here is pretty much manageable okay this speed time graph also quite good the section b here so if i were to read mm, okay these are the three questions that i think students might struggle okay so i wish you all the best in your upcoming examination bye, -bye.